All right, guys, with the craziness of UFC 251 just behind us, we got the only man on that can react to some of the craziness that went down on Fight Island. You know this man from losing to New York Rick in the FIFA Challenge, and I guess he does some other stuff in the world of MMA, of course, with Superior Man and all the other great stuff that he does. Sean Sheehan, welcome back to Submission Radio, man, in the aftermath of what is a, an interesting event to talk about. Mm -hmm. no, let me just correct you there on one thing. I didn't. I never lost to New York Rick in anything, in any facet of life, in anything. So I'll correct you on that. I, I played Danny Segura in a game once. We were supposed to have a rematch. It, it was you not. Sound like Charles Sutton right now, Sean. I'm just saying. <laughs> it, was, it was never a one after round. I'll tell you, I've I've actually been a news on that front as well. I just got FIFA 20 on PlayStation 4. I got FIFA 20 on Xbox. So whenever Danny Segura wants to call my name, I'm here and I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So so just okay. So let's let's just do that again. One of the most underrated analysts in the MMA space, undefeated world champion. It is Sean Sonnen back on the program. So thanks for joining us, Sean. <laughs> hey, <you> doing, sweet <laughs> potato. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Great to have you. Actually, okay. we have missed you, and it's been ages since, ages since you've been on. We do also have to mention that you've been up probably for almost 24 hours yourself. It's very mm -hmm. early in the morning there in Ireland, around 8 in the morning after you spent all night watching fights. So we do appreciate you coming on the program, man. Thank you so much. Oh, butter. I, I'd be awake anyway. What else would I be doing? What would you be doing sleeping? <laughs> sleeping. I, when you cover MMA, like, I was just thinking about our tweet. I was like 7.13 in the morning. I was like, I just made terrible life choices to be in this position. So it's my own fault, really. So like, who can I blame? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're like yeah you're basically like the batman of mma you're up at night watching over us giving us the the sweet coverage mm. that we want yeah. so now with masvidal and usman in the books obviously this is mm. such a highly anticipated fight such a highly anticipated event a lot has been made about masvidal's short notice step up um i know the dana white seemed to be downplaying the whole thing talking about it and oh no he had, he had a great preparation he was stuffing shots in the in the fourth and fifth but now that it's a, it's all in the books how would you sort of summarize masvidal and usman the fight the way it played out jorge being very relaxed, very sort of relishing in the moment. Usman employing a very good game plan and arguably taking a bigger risk than Masvidal with obviously the title on the line and uh, getting the job. How would you summarize it, Sean? You know, there's one word you'd summarize. I think this whole kind of card and in different ways, but I think predictable is the way to kind of summarize it. Like I did, yeah. um, I, I do a thing at the start of the year. I do my like 20 ball predictions for the year and I predicted that. Usman would beat Masvidal five rounds to zero, and he did in two of the cards tonight. I myself, I thought it was four one, but how ever, this fight was always kind of going to, going to go that way. I think, I think even if he had a full camp, now it might have been different, but I, I actually think if he had a full camp, it would have gone a little bit worse because I think he would have fought a little bit differently, and he would have fought maybe a little bit more tactically and gotten taken down a little bit more and made it even more boring. Whereas he tried to fight, I think he tried to fight the fight he should have tried to fight. He came out and he gave up the positions that Masvidal earned for himself without too much of a fight. And then when he got the positions he wanted to get in, which was obviously in the striking, he tried to take his head off. You know, he tried to kick him in the body. He tried to kick him in the head. He tried to knock him out. Uh, and it didn't work. And once that didn't work, it was always going to be a straightforward enough uh, decision for Usman. So I think it was just a bit, I think it was just a bit predictable. Like it wasn't a bad fight. None mm. of the fights in this were bad fights, but a lot of them were, were very predictable. There was, there was some good fights now, to be honest, but yeah, it was, it was a long card and a predictable card. And this fight, like Masvidal, Masvidal did extremely well to have the last, what was it, 18 months for himself, to, or maybe a little bit longer, to knock out Ben Askren, to knock out uh, Darren Till, to get the huge Nate Diaz fight, to get a title fight, and to get the, U uh, the, the, U2, the UFC to kind of cow <coughs> out to his demands obviously on short notice because of the whole Gilbert Burns situation. And he got two huge paydays. Like, for a fighter, you know, people call him a journeyman, and it's that's a bit unfair, especially because what if, of what he's done recently. But up until then, you could have called him that. A very good fighter, don't get, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him. But for him to have that year, like, you, people have to remember, most fighters don't have that. Like, most of the top fighters don't have. D Demetrius Johnson probably hasn't had a year making the money that... Um, Asvidal has had and for me he's the greatest fighter of all time so fair play to him and uh, look it, it ended this way he might have another fight you know he might fight Nate Diaz again or he might get a McGregor fighter maybe it's not over but I think the, the the kind of illusion of him being the best welterweight in the world is kind of a little bit over like it was for Ben Askren as well but 
sometimes that's all you need, a little bit of an illusion to fool people in MMA, and uh, it worked very well for him. It's very well said. To, uh, sorry to jump in, but I was going to say it's very well said, Sean, because it's it's kind of like the saying, you know, when you let the cat out of the bag, it's uh, it's hard to get that cat back in there. And it's exactly. kind of the same thing with Jorge Masvidal. I feel like as soon as this fight ended, uh, the reaction that I saw on social media was very not the same as the Ben Askren one, because obviously Askren went down in a spectacular fashion, but people were just kind of like, all right, well, What's kind of next for Usman? And people were, yeah. were like, oh, maybe Mazadal can have a rematch with Nate Diaz. But it wasn't what it was, you know, a few hours before where people were just mm -hmm. discussing, you know, the BMF champ, you know, becoming the champion, taking on all comers, becoming this huge super star in the game. So I'm just wondering, do you think the gamble that uh, Jorge made with his manager, Abe, they obviously got a lot more money than what they were going to get initially. They took the paycheck. They took the short no notice with it, which that came with all the sort of stipulations of if you lose, you lose a lot in terms mm -hmm. of steam and stock. Do you think it was worthwhile or do you think it, they could have played the long game, a smarter game and sort of picked the fights a little bit better? Maybe kept this thing going for a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, if there was crowds around now and, and you, you know you could fill out stadiums and everything like that, I would have said they should have played the longer game and taking the Nate Diaz fight next so you could get another big payday, or maybe even the McGregor fight next, which is an astronomical payday, and then maybe go into um, a title fight. Maybe you know The McGregor fight's a tougher fight, obviously, than the Diaz fight, but uh, I think he'd probably win the Diaz fight if they fought again, and then go into the title fight. Like, that title fight was, you know, we saw it tonight. I predicted, and I think most people probably, I'm not to the comments, I have some sort of genius or anything, although I would the other time, but <laughs> it, it, that was always going to be the invite. Like, that title fight was always going to be the invite. Like, we, like people know MMA. People have watched MMA, and they know Usman is just a horrendous matchup from Asphodel. And, you know, that's so, like, McGregor doesn't want to fight uh, Usman, or probably the UFC don't want to fight Usman. Like, I was thinking before the fight tonight, uh, if... Masvidal had won, um, and we're in the exact opposite position. We talk about that and say, "Well, like, imagine if Masvidal had won, we would, you'd be onto me here asking me, is Conor McGregor going to come out of retirement to fight him? Like that's what yeah. would have been happening. First is question. Conor McGregor going to be a three division world champion if he beats mm. Masvidal? This would be the talk. Now we're talking about uh, who's who's Usman going to fight? Like who? Like who's he <laughs> going to fight? Colby Covington, Ponzani, like who cares? Like that. That's the problem here. Um, and if for the UFC, like, the UFC would have badly wanted Masvidal to win this. And, they could, like, I feel for everyone, they could have got a little bit more out of him. And if, I think, the, if there was crowds and if they could draw a big crowd and make more money out of it, they would have done it that way. And if uh, Gilbert Burns hadn't fallen out of this, they would have tried to do it that way as well. But it kind of fell badly for him. But I think for, for Masvidal, he took what he, he got, you know, and he did he did a great job of it. And I couldn't criticize him for that. But... It, I think it could have gone on a little bit longer, yeah. The, the EA UFC 4 game suddenly changes from Masvidal to Khabib and the next <laughs> yeah. Hey, what happened to the cover? <laughs> Why is Amanda Nunes not on it? Why is Amanda... She, like, yeah. we've an undisputed goat here. You know, you can dis dispute about John Jones and Demetrius Johnson or whoever you might want to dispute about, but there's no disputing about Amanda Nunes. She should be on there. And you, the UFC games are horrendous as well. I don't know how anyone plays them. They're rubbish, like. You know, oh, I hate them. Anyway. Yeah, but did Amanda Nunes fight in backyard fights, Sean? Yeah, same thing. Probably. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but I was going to say, so now, obviously, we want to find out what's next for us, and we'll talk about that in a second. But now, I guess the big narrative is it's it's not a massive blow for Masvidal, but it's almost a Cinderella story. And uh, was it was it Cinderella with the, with the golden slipper or whatever, or the diamond oh, slipper? And now, now the clock has struck midnight, and uh, the dream is sort of over. So... And, and by the way, fair play to Usman. He, he had a great game plan, did a very good yeah. job. And also fair play to Masvidal, because if this is Masvidal, say, three or so years ago, he would have maybe coasted a little bit. That was one of the biggest criticisms, that he didn't have that aggression. And he showed that in spots tonight. But obviously, there were some big negotiations with the UFC. Dana White kind of is pushing this narrative that, like, well, there's no need for a rematch because Masvidal had the proper training camp. He was bringing in wrestlers, etc. So it doesn't seem like that rematch is in, in the works anytime soon. And uh, Jimmy Smith was on the program last week talking about how if you look at a lot of the guys nearby Masvidal in the division, they're not great uh, stylistic matchups for him. Ma uh, Wonderboy already beat him. Uh, Colby Covington is obviously a phenomenal wrestler. Do you think we witnessed Masvidal's final ever title shot? Or do you think there's a way for him to work his way back up uh, like he claimed after the fight that they'd meet again? Uh, maybe if there's a 165-pound uh, division or something like that, which there could be, like if McGregor comes back and he demands it, maybe they'll make it. But 
at once you never know at one seventy. Like he could get one fight and get back into a title fight. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. I would. I definitely wouldn't count it out, especially in this day and age. But like, probably not. I'd say. Does he like? Does he really want one as well? Especially if Usman is champion. It's hard to see Usman getting beat. Like maybe, like I think Wonderboy versus Usman would probably be a a good matchup to make down the line. Maybe if Wonderboy wins one more, but. Like, that's going to be another probably boring fight as well because you're going to have another, like, Usman versus Wonderboy title fight. And I, like, I love Wonderboy. I think he's fantastic. But, like, it's... The, the thing about it is, to, in in today's MMA and today's UFC, who where, where would you make more money? Masvidal versus Nate Diaz? Masvidal versus McGregor? Or Masvidal for a title? No matter who it is, if it's not those lads. Mm. Masvidal like, quality, making... that could be a big lead up as well. Yeah, but the Colby isn't the name of McGregor or uh, or uh, Nate Diaz. Like he's maybe not if he becomes much. champion down the track or something like that, then you could build mm. something. Yeah, maybe. Like Sean doesn't buy <laughs> no. <laughs> that. No, not so at all. Look at him. Look yeah. at him. We're like we're in a <laughs> no, we're in a weird position though as well because it's I I find it very tough to know who's actually draws in this day and age in the middle of coronavirus because. We had Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje, two phenomenal fighters, especially Justin Gaethje. I think he's one of the best fighters in the world. But they drew, what was it, 700,000 buys? But neither of the two of them are draws. It's because people are sitting at home and they're bored. And in America, there's no other sport done. At least, you know, over in Australia, you have some sport and we have the Premier League and La Liga and everything here. But they have nothing. Like, so they're at home and they want to buy it and they're going to buy it. And I'm sure this car probably sold well as well. But, like, how long is that going to last? I think... Isn't basketball coming back and baseball and other things? And once they all come back, you'd be kind of sick of sport again straight away. So I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to last. Like, and it's if it's Colby Covington versus Masvidal, I doubt that's going to sell very much. But sure, why not? Let's do it. Be a bit of crack anyway. When I was looking at the internet reaction to Usman winning, and again, like Casper said, he went in there, he did his job. He fought a different fighter on short notice. And, you know, maybe it was an easier matchup than a guy like Gilbert Burns. But regardless, he was taking a risk and flying all the way to Fight Island to do it. Mm -hmm. People's response wasn't that positive. You know, uh, we put out a question out there, who should he fight next? And, you know, people were, were saying not in a main event. They don't really, not that they don't care, but it doesn't look like that he won that much stock points with this win mm -hmm. over... Uh, Mazadal, is, is there a chance that uh, Kamara Usman is still sort of in the same position that he was in before this fight, where people are still not completely sold on him? Yeah, but that that's the problem with someone like who is completely dominant, but not in like an exciting way. No, he's the, the Colby Covington fight was exciting. He's had a few exciting fights, but it's uh, uh, like MMA is a very you know short term short me short term memory sort of sport we only remember like it only happened a couple of hours ago and that's Cameron Usman now forever so like <laughs> the Gilbert Burns fight could be a good fight um do you know what I'd love to see Habib versus uh Cameron Usman that'd be a lot of mm. titanic that battle that'd be that'd be very good I don't know if Habib's gonna go up and obviously Habib's gonna fight Gaethje as well and probably McGregor again but mm. it's... better fights too <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Like it's Us Usman is in that terrible position where he is the best in the world in his weight division, and it's very hard to see anyone giving him an exciting matchup that's going to be a big name. Like I'll fight McGregor, you know he's going to earn a load of money out of it. It's going to sell a load. That's not going to be a great exciting fight, is? And even if Khabib comes up, I love it. Neil, I love it and stuff. But I don't know if the casuals will love it. Like it'll be a great, you know, a mad battle. But. Um, wonder boy, is that going to be a great fight? Probably not. You know, Gilbert Burns, the one that's going to be next, is probably the best fight out of all of them. I think Gilbert Burns will bring it to him. He's good jujitsu. His wrestling is good as well. And that that it's funny enough. You know, it, the, the fight that probably will sell least will probably be the best fight. So as an MMA fan, as someone who's going to tune in anywhere, and everyone probably listen to this podcast, it's probably the best for all of us. Anyway, where, where, so, just congrats. quickly, where does uh, Covington fit into the picture for you? Obviously, you've got Leon yeah. Edwards and Covington. And it, it, the fight between Covington and Usman in a weird way is an exciting one from the perspective of these guys kind of cancel each other out. There's bad blood there. And they actually had a pretty exciting fight when they fought last. Very close. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I watched that fight at the time and I was very disappointed because it was not the fight I wanted it to be. You know, it wasn't that <laughs> kind of wrestling battle. And I was like, ah, this is, this fight was rubbish. And then I went back <laughs> and I watched it. I was like, I was completely wrong. That was a great fight. So I, yeah, I'd love to see it again. But like, there's a lot there's a lot of fights there. The thing about Colby is just he never seems to want to fight. You know, he's always waiting out. And there's, that seems to be a recurring team with lots of people these days. And you can't blame him, I suppose, you know. But like, 
Colby versus Wonderboy, Colby versus Edwards. Who else is there? No one else really. But the, like those, those <laughs> lads, they can all fight each other. Just do a roundabout, do a tournament. Get fucking four of them, do a tournament. Job done. I love it. The, anyway, the, the, the jobs are good and they're, they're good lads i feel like the ufc after the masvidal negotiations is like ah oh, thank god gilbert burns is uh, nice and easy yeah. and around the corner and, and, and willing to fight and i also feel like guys like usman they're not so much appreciated while they're active almost it's only yeah. later on that we appre- like gsp got the same criticism right yeah. like oh he's so boring and but it's like the reverence that people talk uh about gsp now and even well dj i don't know if he ever really got the credit but like people kind of look back on what he did and in so much awe compared to you know when he was actually fighting so maybe that's going to happen with usman he's quietly you know almost cleaning out the division still some tough tests in there but he's doing a very good job um, i'm curious though what you think of Volkanovski and Holloway because this is one that obviously had a lot of people debating once the decision was was finally read I'll, I'll be honest with you man watching that fight live I thought Holloway won when the decision was read out I was like oh man I don't know I feel like that was a robbery I had time to go back and re-watch that third round and I'm all turned around I actually think that Volkanovski landed uh, a, a lot cleaner inside leg kicks he had uh, Holloway I wouldn't say hurt but he landed some good lefts um, mm-hmm. He also had him controlled up against the fence, which really didn't do a whole lot. But I think it, I actually think the third round was pretty clear cut for Volkanovsky. I'm very curious what people think once they rewatch the fight. And I was also curious, I was also fascinated by how differently I saw the fight once I rewatched mm. it. Sean, I'm curious if you had a chance to rewatch that third round because I think that's really what's sort of the curiosity factor, right? Holloway won one and two. Clearly, Volkanovsky won uh, four and five. What did you think about the fight, Sean? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a very close fight. Like, I scored a 3 2 to Max, but like, mm-hmm. it was very close. Actually, on the, I saw the judges' scorecards just before we started, and it was actually the fourth and so the first four rounds, they all scored them 1 and 2 to Max, 3 and 4 to Volkanovski. And it was actually the fifth round was the round that was the oh. deciding factor. So one scored it for Max, and the other two scored it for uh, Volkanovski, if I think I have that right. So yeah, that, that was the way I did it. But. It was like it was a very close fight. See, the problem with this fight is it's uh, like people t- look. When I've talked about MMA scoring nonstop. People are probably sick of me talking about it, but we have to forget about how we want to score MMA and we have to look at how MMA scored. So, MMA scored five minutes, it's not scored 25 minutes, it's not scored 10 minutes. So, the first five minutes, Max Holloway won and he won well. The second five minutes, Max Holloway won and he won well. The third five minutes, very close. The four five minutes very close. The fifth five minutes very close. And Alexander Volkanovsky won those last three five minutes, and he won the fight. Even though Max Holloway won the first two very close. That's just how MMA has scored him mm. bread. And like it's that's the rules of the sport. Uh, you know, if you score a goal in soccer and you score from forty yards, or you score a tap in, it's still one goal. That, is that fair? Maybe not. It's, it's the rules of the sport. We have to get over it. We have to do it that way. <laughs> it, it it was very close. It could have been 5 0 to Max Holloway. It could have been 5 0. It couldn't have been 5 0 to Volkanovsky. That was a problem. It could have been 4 1, but it could have been 3 2 to Volkanovsky as well. With MMA, it's like it's a very difficult sport to score because I, I, I talked to judges and I had been cartilage to judge on my podcast, and he goes, judging is a verb as well. So it's not just, you know, you're not just judging a fight. You turn up and you judge. You judge how hard someone hits someone else, how much that submission matters how much this jab matters, how much this left hook matters. And that that person is put there to judge because they have done it for years and years and years and they've practiced and they've become one of the best in the world. Uh, and that's something that's very hard for us to fathom <laughs> because these are kind of nameless faces people, especially now with their masks on, sitting cage side. So it's, it's a tough job and it's uh, a tankless job really. And it's very tankless because a vast majority of the people don't look at the actual rules and they just make up their own rules. I did, I did it for years and years and years until I went to know when I kind of read the criteria and I tried to understand it a bit more. And even now, I thought Max Holloway won that fight. I'll go back and rewatch it again. I'll probably think it's closer. But I think, like, for me, it came out to the third round as well. I agree with you, even though it didn't on the judges' cards. Like, I thought that leaping left hook for Volkanovski... Look mm. like just thinking back and it now was very good, you know, kind of Mark Hunt style, leaving him with it. It's mm. the, the, the thing about it, this fight, I'm probably going off track now, my apologies, but like coming into it and in the first fight, um, 
Volkanovski was kind of dipping in low and throwing all his shots. You know, he would throw to the body, he'd throw up high, he'd throw his leg kick. And Max Holloway took that away in the first two rounds. He was throwing his knee through the middle, he was throwing his uppercut through the middle. And Volkanovski stopped. And what did I say then? He started throwing the leap and left hook. So he started going high, tall, high and tall and over the top. And he started fighting Mark, um, Mark Hunt, Max Holloway a different way. And it kind of changed the fight around again. I thought it was a brilliant tactical fight. I said before the fight, it's probably a fight you'll have to watch two or three times afterwards just to look at it tactically. And I think you probably will, and you probably will for judging as well. But it was a fun fight, very close fight. It's an interesting one as well, because going back to people's uh, perception of the fight, obviously not that many people still familiar with Alex Volkanovsky. He's still relatively a new name, especially overseas here in Australia, New Zealand. Everybody loves him. A lot of people felt very strongly that Max won that fight. They felt it was like it was a bit of a robbery. And there was a little bit of negativity towards Alex Volkanovsky online from fans that don't really know, know him. I mean... What do you make of his stock after this one? What do you make of the sort of perception that he's got with fans? Do you think he moves up with a lot of these fans who haven't heard of him before over there in the States? Or is it a situation where he's in the same or maybe even lower position to them? Um, I'd say probably the same. Like for me, he's gone up in stock because Max Holloway literally did everything better from the first fight that he did wrong in the... Yeah, everything that he did wrong in the first fight or everything that Volkan... Maybe not did wrong, but everything that Vol Volkanovski capitalized on, Max Holloway adjusted. And then Volkanovski adjusted again to win those last three rounds. Okay, they were obviously very close. But for me, he's gone up my estimation. But it was, one of the, like, it was one of those fights where sometimes you get a good fight on a great night of fights and it rises everyone's stock, you know? And this was a good fight on kind of a predictable night of fights. So, like, I, I don't think it's rising. He's, stock, he's probably the same. I don't think he's gone down in stock or, or anything. You know, people will kind of forget that they were mad about the decision after a while and, you know, maybe they'll even make the fight again. I know it's it's hard when Volkanovski's won both fights now on, on the cards to make another one, but, like, that featherweight division... It's just such such a good division. There's so like, let's say if he fights Yair Rodriguez, fantastic fight. If he fights Zabid, fantastic fight, or whoever mm. else it might be coming up, lots of great fights there. Max Holloway fight again. I'd love to see that. But uh, the thing about you know we were talking there a second ago about being short termism in MMA. Okay, we, even if his stock has gone down a little bit now, there's some great fights coming up, and it'll go rise right back up again when uh, when he takes them. Hmm. Just quickly, uh, before you go, Dennis, I wanted to say that Alex Volkanovsky just quietly beating the top two consensus goats uh, in the featherweight division, you know, in Jose Aldo and also when in Max Holloway. Doing it twice be, with when, Max Holloway. When did you be Conor McGregor? When did you, what did you say? When did you be? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Oh, sure. You did he beat Wes Sims? I don't know. Did he? No, I was <laughs> going to say. Swanson, didn't he? Yeah. It, it was, uh, it, I agree with you, Cass. And especially where um, it was a fight where Max Holloway, like we all thought, was winning at the start and was able to do, make some damage for Alex Olkonovsky to go in there and have the presence of mind to turn that fight around and then win those three rounds. I think it shows a lot of the skill and his mental tenacity. I mean, I, I know part of him would be a little bit disappointed about those initial rounds, but he's definitely got that championship mindset. So interesting to see what happens next, like you mentioned, Sean. As we wrap up... Just quickly, I mean, Dennis, Alex, Alex Volkanovsky exiting one of the rounds and just going, fuck, as he, as he gave <laughs> Max Holloway like a, 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 a good stuff thing and looking at his kind of going, fuck, because he knew he, he didn't do that well. Yeah, it's like, he's an Aussie, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's an Aussie, man. Um, uh, Sean, yes. other great performances on the card as we wrap up. Um, Jury, an amazing addition to the UFC light heavyweight division. I knew that was a great signing as soon as the UFC made it. I mean, the guy has made a great appearance in Risen. Now he's over there in the UFC, just beat Vulcan, a really tough dude. And then obviously, uh, Pierre Yan becoming the champion, the bantamweight champion of Jose Aldo, who put up a, a good, respectable uh, performance against him. Uh, what sort of stands out to you in this card? And what are a couple of things, sort of, sort of takeaways as, you can, as we wrap up here on Submission Radio for you? I think Amanda Hebas was the standout for me. I love her. I think she's brilliant. Mm. I think she's a star outside and inside of the cage. I think she's absolutely fantastic. I think she's a star. I, I, I wasn't that and impressed Paige with Paige going to free agency. I don't yeah, know why I she should. Yeah, she should. But like Bellator is probably the best place for Paige now. Although how much money the Bellator of that DAZN deal is is up, I think. I don't know if they'll sign a new one or what. But yeah, it's mm. it's tough. Maybe Bellator don't have the money anymore. I don't know what she's going to do. But Bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. Bare knuckle boxing, God almighty. Why would anyone do that? Box dancing. God almighty. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, else? Uh, yeah, for Yan, right. I, I I, think Aldo is actually a really bad matchup for Yan. And I think, so. I, I saw someone tweeting, and I, I, I agree with him. I'm just going to steal their point. Like, that 
he fought a very intelligently paced fight. You know, he started kind of slow and you think, oh, Aldo's kind of taken over. And then Aldo, and I was talking about it before, like, what will Aldo look like in the fourth and fifth round at 135 pounds? You know, he had a tough cut to 145 pounds and he wilted, you know, he wilted badly. And Yan came on strong in that time and won it then. Mm. I, I don't think it was a, I don't think he particularly fought well. Uh, and I'll be, I'm, I still think there's questions about Peter. I think he's a very good fighter, and I think he will improve. He's still fairly young in his career, so it's, you know, a lot, lots of people have questions about him. But I'm interested to see where he goes. And yeah, Amerikani was good as well. Ireland's own Macwan Amerikani, so he was good. <laughs> and uh, Prohaska, yeah, I want to see him fight Johnny Walker. What a fight that'd be! Just two mad Ooh. bastards going around, and just throwing limbs. <laughs> and also, what does Aljamain Sterling have to do to get some respect around here? Dana White kind of like a bit meh, a little bit lukewarm on him. I think it's pretty definitive that he gets the next shot, and Dana White not really convinced. Talking about Marlon Moraes, saying that they'll, they'll figure it out, which is You're another way of saying nothing. <laughs> Beg your pardon, you're right, <laughs> this is going to be the Frankie Edgar rant all over yeah. again from Sean no, Shan, no. and I feel like you've just gotten your fans back <laughs> from our audience, Sean. So we'll let you go. Follow the man at Sean Shan BA. He's very nice. Donates to charities. All right, no, no reason to be angry at him, despite what he said about Frankie Edgar in the past. Sean, That's we over. appreciate you staying up so late chatting with us i think it's like uh i don't know a million hours past midnight where you are you're pretty much a, a vampire at this point so we thank you so much and uh what an event what an event ufc 251 in the books uh we'll see you guys very shortly 